Sub-Saharan Africa is home to the second heaviest land mammal in the world, the hippopotamus. Their dense bodies make it impossible for them to swim, even though they spend most of their time in the water. The name hippopotamus derives from the Greek term for river horse. Indeed, hippos enjoy freshwater habitats like no other land mammal because of their semi-aquatic nature. The body of the hippopotamus is well suited for aquatic life. Their eyes, ears, and nostrils are located at the top of their head so they can see, hear, and breathe while mostly submerged. A clear membrane covers and protects their eyes while allowing them to see underwater. Their nostrils close to keep water out, and they can hold their breath for several minutes. Staying underwater helps the hippopotamus not feel the weight of its hulking frame. They can weigh up to 3,600 kilograms, or 8,000 pounds. Hippos are native to Africa, but here we ask the question, could hippos survive in Australia? In order to determine whether this would be possible, we need to consider their natural diet, habitat, and climate, and compare these to what's available in Australia. Firstly, let's look at their diet. Hippos are herbivores and feed on a variety of plant species, including grasses, sedges, reeds, and other aquatic vegetation. Their diet may vary depending on exactly where they live and the species of vegetation available to them. Some hippos feed primarily on grasses, whereas others eat larger amounts of aquatic plants. These can include water hyacinths, water lettuce, and water lilies. Hippos come out of the water at night to feed. Sometimes they travel great distances to find their preferred vegetation. They are known as grazers and can eat as much as 100 pounds or 43 kilograms of plant matter each night. They also eat plants in the water where they spend most of their time in the day. In Australia, there would likely be enough suitable vegetation for hippos. Both water hyacinth and water lettuce grow there. They are, however, invasive species. And in some places, this vegetation is clogging up the waterways. Some local authorities are taking measures to try and remove them from rivers and lakes. They grow in northern Australia where the climate is warm and wet. Introducing hippos to these waterways could certainly keep the unwanted vegetation down, and there would be plenty for them to eat. Hippos are well adapted to their diet. Their lips are wide and tough to help them rip up vegetation from the ground. Their large teeth crush the plant matter before swallowing it. They have a long digestive tract which allows them to absorb as much nutrition from the plant matter as possible. While hippos can consume a large quantity of food each day, they are also able to go without food for several days if necessary. Interestingly, hippos can consume food both on land and underwater, where they can hold their breath for several minutes. They may even walk along the bottom of rivers and lakes to reach aquatic plants. They would likely be able to survive in certain parts of Australia where the lush vegetation that makes up their diet thrives. But there is more than just food when we consider if an animal can live in a certain location. So, let's look at habitat. Hippos are semi-aquatic animals. Their natural habitat includes many slow-moving or still bodies of fresh water. They can be found in rivers, lakes, and swamps. Common hippos are native to sub-Saharan Africa, with the pygmy hippo inhabiting West Africa. As long as there is plentiful water, they can live in a range of habitats from open savannas to rainforests. Hippos spend much of their time in the water because they use it to regulate their body temperature and protect their skin from the sun. Hippos prefer water sources that are deep enough to fully submerge themselves, with muddy banks that they can use to exit and enter the water. They are well adapted to life in the water, with streamlined bodies, webbed feet, and the ability to hold their breath for several minutes. But does Australia have these kinds of freshwater habitats to enable hippos to live there? Australia has a rich diversity of freshwater ecosystems that are home to a wide range of species, some of which are found nowhere else in the world. Many rivers and streams vary in size and characteristics. Some of the most famous rivers include the Murray-Darling River system, the Fitzroy River in Western Australia, and the Franklin River in Tasmania. The Murray River is the country's largest river and flows through southeastern Australia. It is a slow-moving river that is preferred by hippos. The slower-moving bodies of water often provide the aquatic plants that hippos are so fond of. 
The Murray River in Australia, particularly in the lower reaches, creates important habitats for a variety of aquatic plants and animals. In some parts of Africa, hippos are known to live exclusively in lakes, where they can form large groups or pods that may number in the dozens or even hundreds. There are many natural and man-made lakes and reservoirs in Australia. Some of the largest natural lakes include Lake Eyre, Lake Torrens, and Lake Frome in South Australia. Lake Eyre is located in the northern part of South Australia and, despite being the largest lake in Australia, would not be suitable for hippos. Not only does it contain salt water, but its size can fluctuate dramatically depending on the amount of rainfall and the flow of the rivers that feed it. When it is full, Lake Eyre has a surface area of over 3,500 square miles, making it one of the largest saltwater lakes in the world. However, it is often much smaller than this, and during times of extended drought, it can dry up almost completely, leaving behind a vast expanse of salt flats. This is also true of Lake Torrens and Lake Frome. They are also saltwater lakes and often dry up during drought. Salt water is much denser and contains much higher levels of salt than fresh water. This can make it difficult for hippos to maintain the proper balance of fluids and electrolytes in their bodies. Exposure to salt water can cause dehydration and even death in hippos, as their kidneys are not equipped to efficiently filter out excess salt from their bodies. Hippos would not be able to survive in Australia's saltwater lakes. However, Australia has many freshwater lakes that are scattered across the country. Located in the far north of Western Australia, Lake Argyle is a unique and important ecosystem that supports a wide variety of plant and animal species adapted to the hot and dry conditions of the Kimberley region of Western Australia. Freshwater crocodiles and a huge variety of fish and birds can be found in and around Lake Argyle. Lakes like this could provide a potential habitat for hippos. Lastly, let's consider the climate. Hippos are well adapted to the hot and humid climate of Sub-Saharan Africa. They have several adaptations that allow them to cope with the unique environmental conditions of their habitat. Their skin is known to secrete a natural sunscreen that protects them against the sun. It is also incredibly tough and protects them from waterborne parasites. Their large size helps them to retain heat and conserve energy in cooler temperatures. It also makes them formidable animals and less prone to predatory attacks from animals that also call Africa home. Their eyes, ears, and noses are located towards the top of their heads which allows them to see, hear, and breathe whilst remaining almost entirely submerged. Because they are so reliant on and adapted to water, they would not survive in dry regions. Australia is the driest inhabited continent. South Australia is the driest state in Australia and sees regular droughts. Rainfall in Australia is greatest in the far north and in some small pockets along the east coast. However, overall, Australia experiences far less rainfall than some of the African countries where hippos are native. In Africa, the rainy season fills the rivers, lakes, and dams where hippos thrive. In Australia, is it likely that there isn't enough rainfall over a great enough area for hippos? In conclusion, we feel that although there would probably be enough vegetation for hippos in Australia, there may not be enough freshwater sources or a suitable climate. Freshwater lakes and rivers certainly do exist in Australia, but they seem to be less abundant than in Sub-Saharan Africa. The climate, although warm and wet in small pockets of the country, seems largely to be too dry for hippos to thrive. Introducing hippos to Australia could have detrimental effects on the local ecosystem. As an invasive species, hippos could disrupt the balance of native flora and fauna compete with other herbivores for food, and potentially damage aquatic habitats. Although this is theoretically possible for hippos to survive in Australia with human intervention and modifications to the environment, it is not a practical or ethical solution. Introducing non-native species to an ecosystem can have far-reaching consequences, and it is generally best to focus on conservation efforts for native species instead. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.